Hello there everybody and welcome back to episode 12 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six version 66. We got a wonderful city right now. I have finished all the projects that I wanted to finish between the episodes. We have that bathhouse done and we have the second guard post down. Since that happened, the fulfillment for law has been maximized. And that is exactly what we wanted to see. This is a huge bump up, as you can see there. We have gained a lot of happiness out of that. And obviously, the second bathhouse does the trick as well. With the bathhouses, the bar is finally not locked behind any upgrades. Technically, you want to get as close as you can to 100% coverage. My personal rule of thumb is whenever this meter drops below 60%, I feel like I need a new bathhouse. That is true for all fully upgraded services in my book. If the service can't be upgraded anymore, if it drops below 50 per, uh, below 60%, that's the spot where you want to upgrade it. Now, today's topic, the main topic, which is hard to define in this scenario, is specialization of your city. When you are going closer to the 500 people, your city will have itself defined. You have a lot of people working in specific fields. And in our city, for example, we have a really, really specialized industry with the clay pit and pottery. So for our scenario, ideally, we should really start capitalizing on that. To do so, we're going to invest now technology points to increase the efficiency of our city. Since we're playing humans, we can play that card much better than other species. With other races, you might as well end up being better off with further expansion, especially when you're playing something like the Cretonians that are really bad at science. So it really depends. Where Whenever you are really good at science, you can build very specialized and high-tech things easier, and you don't need to expand as far. And it's exactly the other way around if you're bad at science. Now, I don't want to build more workshops for now because I want to keep my workers available for stuff like increasing my production here. So at the same time, I do realize that my production and consumption rates here just uh, don't go together too well. So what can we do? Obviously, we want to increase our production, which is going to be quite easy as we have a lot of grain on the surplus side. So we could consider grain also as a specialty good for our city, as we have invested quite a uh, heavy amount of workforce to irrigate that entire huge grain farm. And at that point, we might as well nudge another one into the vicinity of these canals or at least another pasture, which brings me to the next industry, which is worth investing into pastures. Humans are naturally good at that. And I want to show you here that when you go into the menu for the race on the question mark, you see this table. This is important. The blue arrows show you where your productivity is enormous. The green bars show you where your people will be especially happy when they're working at. As you see here, humans pretty much despise ever work equal as much, except for the, the sciences and such. That's where they are really happy at. They also happen to be happy in the field of import and export and guarding. Obviously, we like to have power. That's... Uh, shockingly real. Anyways, what I'm getting down to is that these industries are the ones that you can invest yourself naturally into because you will have a higher payout from, from these technologies. So we might as well consider going into the fruit farming and the veg farming industry as well as our technologies at this point are going to boost up uh, here are boosting up the entire field of uh, farming industry. This paired with the fact that humans are good at farming leads to really, really powerful farms. And also the eatable crop optimization technology is really, really dirt cheap. Now, industrial crop optimization though is, I, I don't know why the first level is so costly, but this would increase your production of cotton. You could also unlock opium farming if you don't want to rely on imports anymore, but I don't deem that a really good field of industry early on. We can also increase a 
specialized amount of grain farming if we don't want to opt into any of these uh, veg or fruit farms. But as one thing ahead of time, where is it at? Come on, show me. Here, procreation. We can we have one time far ahead in the future the option to breed our own little baby humans and they eat fruit. If they don't get fruit, they die. Baby humans only can eat fruit. Every baby uh, of every race has its own food it requires. Gothimi are really, really easy to breed with that meat. And yeah, there is, as you see, a specific food for every race necessary to have procreation going on. For the humans, it's fruit. So we definitely should, if not into if not veg, we should definitely invest into fruit as well. And, obviously, the clay pits. Let's check this out as well. Down here in the mining tab, you can also invest into clay mining bonus. This is a 25 level tech, so you can really crank out a lot of effectiveness out of that. And there is also ore handling down here as a supreme technology that you can add into that. At the end of the road. As far as I have understood the system of Songs of Six, and here, dear comment section, please me correct me if I stand wrong, but these are both multiplicative, uh, multi multiplying things. And if you multiply a already multiplied value, wonderful things happen. Therefore, this is a really, really much more powerful thing as it seems, as we'll start to multiply the already multiplied value from the clay mine bonus. If I if I don't misunderstand something here horribly, please correct me if I stand wrong. It's really hard to 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 science it out in, in terms of numbers. That's why I'm still a little bit insecure. Now, also what we're going to go today into is masonry and smelting. I know last episode I said something opposite, but what we're going to do is we're going to try and save money this way at the same time while we are specializing our city. I have built a third lab. This one isn't fully staffed out yet. I amped up the numbers between the episodes here as well, but it soon will be. We're going to go now over our produ food producing industries and tech them all up a notch. So the edible crop optimization will receive a bump because it's still cheaper to bump up all industries rather than just one. But here at that point, we are going to start investing into the grain farm bonus as well. Down there, there's also the grain enhancement bonus, which is uh, here again, the, the supreme tech. Here you can, you can see there's fruit and there's grain, which you can massively bump up the production. Veg and mushroom, you don't get that option. There is also this wonderful hybrid optimization tech, which gives you bonuses in both fields. So check these out if you want to. We're also intrigued to pick up advanced forestry, but for now I want to focus on the food production. Don't get sidetracked uh, with these things. It's easy to, to be. We want to invest our current tech points mostly into food production as we are slowly falling behind. Therefore, we are going to invest also into husbandry methods, cranking that up by a quite substantial amount. Two levels will have a pretty nice impact. And since we are just learning to smelt and make fine stone ourselves, we are going to learn the fancy hearth technology at the same time. That's been a pretty big deal of technology, but luckily we have a lot of production still in the pipeline. The grand total of production is uh, almost 6,500. And as you see here, with the current scientists working, we still have more on the, uh, on the plate. Now, from this point on now, we can upgrade hearths. And uh, this costs us metal and cut stone. And I'm tired of importing that stuff so costly from our neighbors. Instead, we are going now to start to import the raw material and, and, and refine it locally. Because even if you don't do that on a larger scale, it is still much cheaper to, uh, to import the raw materials rather than the finished material. But when you are still struggling for workforce, I rather recommend to import the whole deal for obvious reasons. So we're going to go and make a rather small time operation here on the metal smelter business. 
going to make this happen back here. Let's go for that one. I'm getting there, promise. Sometimes it's rather finicky. So I'm going to use the opposite half of the building for the Mason's workshop. As, like I said, we are not going to go into a heavy industry here at that point. If you have a natural source of ore or stone, go crazy and uh, just invest heavily into this because, you know, you got the capacity on your city. We, on, our, on the other hand, in this city, only got the capacity for smaller workshops, but it's still paying off a lot to import the ore and all and refine it locally. So we're going to make ye old workshop here. Don't forget to put up a storage there in as well. And that's that. That auxiliary is blocking the doorway here at that point. Bothers me quite much. Let's put it down like that. You don't want to bump into the auxiliary furnace every morning when you're getting to work, don't you? Okay. There we go. And on the other half of the building, we're now going to go and get ourselves the... Why is this refining and this crafting? Yeah, well, whatever. We're going to set up the Mason's Workshop on the other side of the building. There we go. This housing, uh, this, this workshop processes stone into cut stone. Here again, if you have a large quarry going on in your, in your city, you can grow insanely rich out of that industry alone as stone is literally endless and you can not only export it for yourself you also have a really really nice supply of um i don't like that um you really have a nice supply of building materials for yourself in in your own city due, due to that so we'll have to do this a little bit different. Let's see if it works like that. No. Point is that our or we need to put the pillar back. I, I really hate this sometimes, but well, the good point is that when you got a uh, workshop that you really like, oh yeah, I'm going to show you something nifty now. So here we go. drag off like this all right thing is i just don't want to have a, a a one grid storage in here okay so this building will require metal here we go and let's see over here the metal smelter doesn't require anything so if you have a building blueprint you really like you can just uh, go for save room blueprint and then let's say we loved our warehouse especially click that and then we got let's see oh where did the uh where did it go where did the blueprints go they used to be here i saved the blueprint now i access them now here so Save blueprints. So when you construct a new warehouse, then you can go through your blueprint library like this. You find them then here. It has been reorganized. I think this is a very good change. And then you have a, a library of different warehouses available and you can even rename them and such things. It is a really, really wonderful thing. I don't do that too often because when I start doing that, I hate the fact that I start to make everything look the same because I start to use these blueprints everywhere. But if this doesn't bother you, you know, there's, uh, you know, we all play our games differently. I'd highly recommend you to just uh, slap in a few blueprints if you're bothered by building that stuff yourself. Okay, we have recently introduced a new warehouse back here, so let's use that place by investing into some ore. So let's make five store cases uh, of that. And... Jeez. 
Stone is the material. Sometimes my brain just uh, suddenly leaves the building. Anyways, we got that, and I'll leave the rest of the room up for, for other things for now. We will just form up a pull request from the warehouse where we store the stone at. So there is going to be ample supply of material down here, because it would be a shame if we wouldn't have enough material available. Okay, starting from now, we can just buy from our neighbors or instead of metal in its raw form, which is going to be extremely good because we can get much more ore for the same money. So let's see, 122 per ore and 233 per metal. There it goes. So let's order a round of 50 ore starters. and start exporting, well, I personally figured that everything revolving around clay and pottery should be this city's main export material. As we have stupid amounts of that stuff available for ourselves, we can easily trade this. Alright, let's wait out until the metal smelter is ready, because there is no reason to force that uh, mason reconstruction now. We don't need to. We will make our own metal now. So, we're certainly not going to have that many smelters going on. Oh, thanks for the rations, dear lady. And, well, this building consumes coal, obviously. I mean, somehow you got to smelt that stuff. So make sure that your coal production is on par. And the neat thing is that ore and metal translate themselves one to one. That means one piece of ore, one piece of metal. That means we just cut ore costs in half by just starting to import ore. We don't even need to automate that as we can now whenever we feel like we have an overproduction of, of something we can start transforming that manually into ore. I mean, in the previous episode, I've shown you the ways and means of the import depot, so you can also just facilitate a large overflow of denarii at that end and uh, just use it like that. It's up to you. I can only show you the ropes here. We're going to go and invest now, I, I, re, uh, I overthought it, into a full-on onslaught in here until the ore is empty, and then we're going to free up the workers yet again. This way, you can crank up a couple of uh, things for a while, and uh, then when the ore is empty, we go back to business somewhere else. All right, let's look into the numbers. We have cranked up the technology by a lot. Let's see how that reflects in our numbers. You can see that the production rates are slowly climbing, and if we compare our grain farming to our to our consumption, we don't see any huge impact. That is because if you upgrade farming technologies and agricultural technologies, the impact of these slowly shows. That's been my experience. It does take a while for these new technology technology things to seep into the numbers. Especially with farming, it's always the same that somehow the game is reflecting the farming numbers according to the last harvest? I don't know. I end up with the same old issues and again and again that I'm living under the slight impression that the farming forecast is always a little bit off. Whatever. So, especially when I, I mean, not generally, but uh, when I when I invest into new technologies. What we're going to set up here next to the grain depot now is going to be an overflow protection for, from ore farms. As you see, we got thousands of pieces of grain right now sitting in our stockpiles. It's time to start exporting that stuff when the time is right. So we're going to start exporting grain 
but obviously not all of it. But uh, once this uh, warehouse is 90% or 80% full with grain, we safely can start exporting. We don't need that much. It will only go bad. This way we can scrape out more denarius out of the situation and you already know that every bit of money is good for you. So here I do notice that we don't have enough housing for all the people that we could hire here. And we do seem to need more workforce yet again. Alright, so we ran out of ore, so we can as well unemploy these fine folks. But they should have produced enough metal to finish the masonry. Or at least that's been my hope. Else, I don't know where the metal went. <laughs> Let's check that or uh, markets are not secretly eating any materials that we don't want to. So for example, we... Yeah, here, cut stone and all I could know. Well, sometimes things just uh, take a while, or we need to import more war. Either way, we should be now able to sustain more people without having lifted a finger in terms of increasing our production capacities. And that is a very, very powerful little tool that we're going to use now, especially since we're playing humans. So, here goes another little housing project. And at that point of the game, it is really starting to be important that we keep replicating those uh, amenities. Wells and hearths. Because people really go nuts if they are not available any, uh, everywhere. And they are also dirt cheap, so you don't need to worry too much about that. So, yep, doesn't seem like we have made enough metal here. How can this be? I imported 50 ore. That weirds me out somehow. Anyways, we're going to go over to the neighbor's place and start demanding some ore again. And this way you can now start a real business there of sorts. So we're going to buy now for, for 4 grand of uh, Denari's new metal. You could even refine it locally and sell them back sell it back to other people sometimes you you get lucky enough that these kind of trades uh work i don't want to i didn't mean to press the bother button <laughs> oopsie anyways so these guys will crank through the ore and get us some locally produced things I just want to cut down in the, in the costs. Or did I read something wrong here? No, it's one to one. Well, whatever happened there, the wise and almighty comment section might fill me in if it does know why the heck 50 ore didn't fulfill an order of 41 metal. But, well, there are mysteries out there. So I'm setting up another speaker back here. I kindly accept the mushrooms. And just like that, ah, now the metal is uh, flowing where it's supposed to flow towards to. And just like that, we're finishing up the masonry. This is a way more straightforward business. It transforms stone into cut stone. It's its primary downside is that uh, I can demonstrate here. It is not too productive. It eats up a lot of stone and a lot of workforce. So, well, I mean, it is stone cutting after all we're talking about here. Let's authorize more people as I want to crank up now the numbers also at the clay pit and the pottery. So we're going really on the big numbers here now. So 107 uh, units of clay per day, and we are now going to up the numbers here as well. Let's see, can we tech out an upgrade for the pottery? At this point, I am always very, very interested in everything that lowers my total worker amount, but no, there is no upgrade available for this kind of industry. Too bad. So we already know that we got 
50 pieces of clay processed by this kind of work uh, force. So we can just double the amount. What we are now also creating is a heavy industry of pottery. Since we have an export depot delivering that pottery wherever it wants to go, you will shortly notice, you will sh notice very, very quickly that kind of money that we're gaining now. Also, we are steadily exporting our clay because you see, why not? We are overproducing this stuff massively, so we might as well export it to other interested parties too. Okay, with all that money flowing into our bank, we're now going to eagerly reinvest it into more ore. And this way we can easily set up now ourselves a supply of metal without uh, spending that much money anymore. Okay, so in terms of uh, round, uh, 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 of uh, getting the whole topic together now, specialization is for every city something different. You can't really summarize it in an easy way, as every city has a different um, bonus towards certain industries, and what can I say? It ain't as easy as just plain build industry X and Y. What is true, though, is as you can see here, we are able to procure many materials just locally, and we're what we are unable to procure locally, we're trying to get via trade, and ideally you only import the raw resources as these are the least costly element in the chain. It is totally okay though in the early stages of the game when your workforce is low to import the finished goods as you are most of the time not really capable of fulfilling the demands that easily. It is just normal like that. And uh, here, like I said, we are now on a higher grain production than before. It's a little bit finicky to find it out, uh, but uh, that is uh, farming in general. It's just, uh, I personally don't mind. We are going to crank up the number of bakers now, and we are going to accept another round of 11 people, because we're out of houses. All right. With that amount of extra bakers at, uh, at business, our food production should skyrocket. Let's see if we can withstand that easily. Now, what does that mean for us as a city? We are golden in so many ways. We can now safely expand the city to our own liking because there is not much holding us back at that end. We are now again mostly after technology and with the next episode I want to start upgrading the labs because we are now able to produce metal in a larger scale, which is extremely important because uh, metal is really one of those uh, um, bottlenecks that really strangles you early on. So therefore, it's really cool when you can fulfill that like that instead of importing the entire stuff. All right, so my good friends, I'll be ending it like that for today. I hope you enjoyed. We're going to continue next episode with the actual real big time expansion of things. I hope we're going to get towards the 500 people in the next episode, probably. And well, we're getting closer and closer to the actual mid game, which is fun. I want to talk military soon, and we are going to go over couple of other things in between. So, see you there, have a wonderful time, drop me your comments down below, leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and consider subscribing. As usual, I want to say thanks for watching, and if you want to support this channel financially, if it's worth a dime or two, I'd be more than grateful, and a big big thanks to all the supporters of Icon Gaming at this point, and a big big thanks especially to you watching this video right here right now, because seriously, where would I be without you guys? So, have a wonderful day. Thanks for being around and see you on next time. Oh, we have an accident. Good that we have a hospital now. Bye.